directly above the Hollywood sign, it's Kren Ben's Friend Trends with Aaron Crennan and Ben Lepley, the working model of a healthy friendship. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Kren Ben's Friend Trends. My name's Aaron Crennan, and I'm alongside my best friend, Ben Lepley. How are you doing, Ben? I'm great, Aaron. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fantastic. Excellent. And we're alongside our friend, Jeremy Rowley. Jeremy, how you doing? I'm on a podcast. Yeah. yeah. 2014. This Woo. is the future. Do people know that you guys record this in a soundproof helicopter? Mm-hmm. Over the, uh, the Hollywood sign. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to get... A helicopter. Uh, sorry, <laughs> to get a helicopter soundproof, <laughs> the hoops you have to jump through. I got to tell you, it's a real rigmarole with the the helicopter carpet company. <laughs> <laughs> it's just carpet. It's just carpet walls. It's carpet started, ceiling. We we try to get enough eggshell cartons, but mm-hmm. uh, or egg cartons, I should say, <laughs> and uh, you know where you keep your eggshells after you dump them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those much quieter. <laughs> you know what? You know that just reminded me of something. We have a, a friend from Des Moines named Frank. Richter, and he had a had a great basement, and we'd always you know, sleep over. <laughs> oh, place. but you're not from the Midwest, so you don't know what a great basement. Or oh, did uh, you have basements? Wait, in, are you? Oh, well, let you tell your story, and then I'm going to tell you my Des Moines basement story because I actually <laughs> no, have I do. You're fucking I kidding me. Have one. I'm not kidding. You are ins- I have a no. Des Moines basement story. Oh, Des Moines. But you, please, okay, you real quick, real real quick sidebar. Uh, so Frank Richter, whenever we, you'd stay over at his house, it was like he had this like jukebox thing and like. He, I mean, it really was like the ping pong table, the jukebox, oh, like darts, like incredible. He had, he had a brother that was like six or seven years older than him. So he had like these hand me down, like the Atari games and like the burned PS1 games. That was like all the Atari games on wow. one disc. Insane. And, and the only downside of spending the night at Frank's house was that when it was time to go to sleep, he'd sleep on the couch and then he would bring out a rolled up thing of egg carton foam and that was your bed. <laughs> oh my God. So it's this gray, like deteriorating, a, a like bumpy, like egg bump thing. And you'd like, I remember he would always sleep in so late in the morning that I, I would get up and I would leave a note for him and his mom thanking them for having me over and like feeding me. And I'd like sneak out the back because he was so passed out and I just couldn't handle being on that foam for like another minute. So it, and then I'd always get a call from his mom later, like later in the day, and she'd be like, "You left without breakfast and without saying <laughs> goodbye." And I, I couldn't bring myself to be like, "You've got to get an air mattress Just or torture." Yeah, I that's left. what I. Oh, after after being tortured, I had to. Leave. I had to leave one morning too. I hope he never listens to this, but he had a big cabinet of NES games, and I was in so much discomfort after spending the night on a on on the egg foam. And I saw in there, I, I, like I'd get up before him, and I don't know if you guys ever did that where you wake up before your friend in a sleepover Always. and there was just nothing Ooh. to do in the house. That's a horrible feeling. It's the worst. And you can't turn the TV on or anything. So I, I started looking through his cabinet of NES games, and I noticed that he had two gold cartridge Legend of Zeldas. Ooh. And I don't know why I did this. I never do stuff like this, but I was like, I'm going to take one of these. Oh, He's why? got two. Why would he need evil? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I had to spend the night again on the foam. So, and of course, looking back, I'm like, well, I should have brought a sleeping bag or thought ahead and stealing is never justified. yeah you never brought a sleeping bag no i just I, I don't know why like i thought they would just take care of it it's probably a major personality flaw with me where i'm like think angry thoughts silently and just assume the person will eventually change until you steal <laughs> <laughs> that'll show them i had a few groups this sorry I'll, we'll get to yours real quick uh my favorite part about that story is that he was on the couch then you're on the floor mm-hmm. and whenever my mom would have or she would like let me have uh, friends over we she always made sure we were always in the same like types like we were all on the floor all on couches mm-hmm. but a lot of my friends i always thought it was weird that the, like danny kent specifically he'd be like well i'm gonna sleep in my bed uh what? you can sleep wherever i guess it's just like, <laughs> figure it out man i was like oh but the fun part of a sleepover is like staying up real late and like but he's like well i'm gonna i'm just gonna head off <laughs> that's like the same as i mean like at the breakfast point in the morning being like so i'm gonna eat breakfast in the kitchen and you guys i guess look around the rest of the house <laughs> <laughs> See if you can find something. There might be food squirreled yeah. away in the den. We yeah. don't know. I don't Hope know you brought your is. own. <laughs> He's very much like, <laughs> I'm taken care of here, and you're not. Oh my I God. enjoy that. So uh, I, when I was about seven or eight, mm-hmm. I had the misfortune of going to Des Moines for <laughs> a family thing mm-hmm. uh, for like two weeks. And I two had two weeks. Uh huh. That's this, long for me oh, to go now. Yeah, like <laughs> that's a tough t- time frame to fill. I had this uh, aunt and uncle 
who were very religious and had like a ton of kids like uh, if it was modern day this was the 80s they'd be on one of those Duggar shows or whatever <laughs> you know they had like a billion kids and literally like sets of twins and triplets all within the kids. holy shit and they wow. lived on this farmhouse in the middle of nowhere and you know he was a preacher or something and then the church gave him the house and they grew their own food and they just like self-sustained you know yeah. so you go into this house and it was like nothing there and i'm a kid that's used to riding my bike and mm-hmm. skateboard and like video games and then you go to middle of the cornfields in iowa with nothing mm-hmm. and it was so boring i wanted to kill myself yeah. and then they're like oh but go down in the playroom which was the giant basement you go down there it's a giant empty basement with the cardboard box that a refrigerator came in <laughs> so a giant cardboard box and that's like the quote toy box oh no but there's no toys in it it's just <laughs> the box is the toy <laughs> and it was like what are we supposed to do and they're like all these kids that are all you know stir crazy it's not like well you can get in the box <laughs> and you can get out of the box <laughs> and you can run around the box oh my and God. it was like I threw so many tantrums and fits because I hated being there. And the only fun thing that ever happened the whole trip was uh, there was a tornado. Oh, we yeah. We all had to sleep in the basement one night. Mm-hmm. All and that was box. awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who gets the box? <laughs> Your friend does. <laughs> What's his name? Oh, Danny Kid. Oh, yeah. Danny, yeah, Danny, Danny, yeah. Yeah. Danny Kid's like, I'm, I'm in the box. I'm in the box. You guys figure it out yourselves. <laughs> Don't go outside, though. Tornadoes are incredibly dangerous. That's hilarious. Um, was it a finished basement or was it like cement floor? It sounds like, like an... Unfinished, unfinished basement. basement. Uh, well, other than I think they threw carpet now. Oh, okay, oh, okay, it. okay. So it was like unfinished plus mm-hmm. carpet. Oh yeah, but it wasn't those. like a rec room man cave. Yeah, sure. Like, it Did was... it have that like like basement smell to like the dank like? Uh, I don't remember it being like the feel of the Saw movies. <laughs> <you know? laughs> I, I think it was clean and whatnot, yeah. but n- n- just nothing yeah. in it. Just bare. Just bare. And that was supposed to be fun that's for crazy weeks. i find that a lot of those basements it's just because there's so much rain in the springtime like we had like i always had these especially des moines had these crazy floods like the flood of 93 was a huge deal where like the the freeway would fill with water like a river rapid <laughs> and i feel like no matter how good your basement was it just there was always like at one point of the year like some water trickling down like i remember we had we had carpet laid down in ours and whenever it would rain really hard, my mom would be like, quick, we got to go down and get the carpet up before what? the water soaks it. Oh, and I yeah, remember that was, <laughs> Sky that Anderson and I went down once and we rolled the carpet back. We were, we were in like 12 years old, rolled the carpet back and you could see little teeny tiny holes where the floor met the wall. And as we were rolling the carpet, water started to bubble and trickle oh, wow. out. So we were rolling the car. It was like an action movie to these two 12 year olds, like rolling the carpet as the water slowly like crept towards it. We're not going to make it. Yeah, it was <laughs> insanity. And like eventually uh, they just ripped all that carpet out and like they had to pay a bunch of money to get this like pump installed and like sort of put this like metal railing down around like the where the floor met the wall. And it was this huge project. But it was just like these basements are just surrounded by like wet soil, if you think about it, the water like creeping towards it from every angle. So weird. Um, Well, Jeremy, you had a question about an item in the helicopter that we're circling around the sign in. Uh, which is a grandfather clock, actually. It's, oh, yes. Uh, and, this, and this ruse. We were in our living room, and there's this... Uh, beautiful grandfather. Beautiful, beautiful grandfather clock. And uh, Mahogany. This, <laughs> Mahogany. This, <laughs> is there any other wood for a grandfather clock? I don't think so. Get that oak <laughs> garbage <laughs> out of my ply. <laughs> Some plywood. I feel like it's actually plywood with just like like stickers mahogany stickers on top of it quite possibly <laughs> i'm not sure if it is wood to be quite it honest. might yeah it doesn't feel like it when you like knock on it i don't or... know what formica is but that's how i imagine <laughs> formica oh my god um so this clock uh back when uh on a previous podcast uh, i talked about my first dorm room in college which they were we called them like squirrel cages because they were incredibly tiny even for dorm rooms they were these little cube like 
prison cell esque, like very very cold and and like a very skinny window in the middle and just like not the kind of place you wanted to live in for a year. So to try to brighten it up, Walmart always sold this grandfather clock and it was only fifty dollars. You had to assemble it yourself, but it had like the swinging pendulum and it, it wow. chimed and everything. Their prices are too low. They're <laughs> they're, they're goofishly <laughs> low. Like I actually never went into a Walmart mm-hmm. really until a trip recently like last summer I was in the middle of Oregon and I had to and I went in there and there was like a full really nice looking outdoor winter coat for three dollars yeah and I was like yeah, keyword nice looking <laughs> but at the same time yeah that I was like you can't do that without slaves <laughs> you can't <laughs> You cannot no, sell you can't. A, a heavy winter coat brand new for $3 unless you have worked out a slave system and you have <laughs> slaves. So that's all. <laughs> they, made, they made the clock components as well. I, it's interesting that the slaves made the pieces of the clock, but then you had to screw it all together in the final stages. Very odd. Um, <laughs> no, is it like, that was like, who's really play. suffering there? Yeah. Ugh. You know, there's, there's something really odd about Walmarts too. It's like, I remember growing up and we would always buy gag gifts for each other at Walmarts because you could buy something like a grandfather clock. for Even, <laughs> even $50 is a lot of money, but it's like... You know, if you get a few friends in on it, you can dump a grandfather clock on a friend's doorstep at three in the morning. And it was just it's just prank material. So uh, we wanted to get this grandfather clock for this super tiny dorm room. And part of it, Aaron and I, Aaron used to come and visit. This was before we went to college together. But on weekends, he'd come up and we'd shoot dumb little video sketches. And our my freshman roommate, Dan, who was really good friends with me and Aaron in high school, we always like to bother him and, and prank him and pester him. So Aaron and I were going to go out and buy this grandfather clock, set it up overnight, and then Dan would come into the apart or the apartment the dorm fall asleep on his loft and this thing would literally be two feet from his head like ding ding all night long <sighs> and i'd have to hear it too but it would have been it would have been worth it for the the prank so that's kind of the where the the seed was planted so when aaron actually moved out to los angeles and moved into uh an apartment with me um we were like we need to finally follow through on this and and get a grandfather clock put together so our friend rachel stamen who helps produce our cartoon and we've been friends with her forever as well heard wind of this and got in on it with us and we dubbed this one day in march clock day (laughs) and the goal it was a sunday too yeah it was which makes all of this that much harder because so many things are closed on sunday yeah exactly so the, it was like early in the morning and we had decided by by day's end, we have to just get a, a grandfather clock. We can't order one. We can't, you know, say we're going to do it next week and find or like price it out. We need to actually acquire the clock I by end of day. arbitrary assignments yeah, with stakes. It's the best. <laughs> yes. We must by the end of the day do X, Y, Z. And I don't know what would have happened if we wouldn't have followed through on it. Probably nothing. But it was we were so serious about really just getting this clock and finally fulfilling this long uh, running window. Wish. So we got uh, we went around to a few uh, antique shops and we found these clocks for like eleven thousand oh, dollars. I mean, they were like from the eighteen hundreds. Like <laughs> they were very, uh, very much a out of our price range and b like actually nice items that didn't deserve to be a part of this like prank oriented like goofy fun day. So we got on uh, Craigslist. Uh, this was towards the end of the day, and we just started looking for grandfather clocks, and we found this ad on craigslist for this place uh in silver lake uh that had like a bunch of them just like that one uh, listed and it was like 150 dollars 200 dollars and we were like well if we split that three ways we'll be we'll be absolutely fine we didn't actually end up going until i'd say like what would you say aaron like four or five in the afternoon like yeah it was was much later it was like We'd wasted the day at antique stores. We <laughs> left a half hour before they were closing, too. Yeah. Like, but it was all the way in Silver Lake from Burbank, so mm-hmm. it was you not we- that far. Wasted the day mock bartering <laughs> with antique. I'll give you a 10 8, and that's all. That's all. <laughs> My final offer. Get out sir please <laughs> sir please leave uh so that was that was a wash but then this was this renewed our our promise to ourselves so we drove down to uh, silver lake and at this point they're they're closing up shop it's like a big furniture store and they're you know they're casablanca they're, yeah casablanca furniture thank you and they're bringing all of their uh what if they paid us to say like <laughs> tell the story about us uh they're like bringing the couches the like the clearance ones that are outside they're like bringing them in and like closing shop so you know 320 somethings run inside and we're like listen we need to get a clock by day's end and they think we're like high and and insane and they're like well you know what guys why don't we give you a catalog and you can come back later 
And then we start doing these these clock and time puns. So we're like, no, 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 you have to understand it's a matter of time. And like, I, I don't remember any of the other ones. That was the one that stuck <laughs> out the most. We got taken over to this guy. This guy, it was like a car dealership. He had like his own little mini desk kiosk where he would like consult you on what you wanted. And I remember he brought us over there to just essentially hand off a catalog and get us out the door. And that's when we started punning back and forth. And so it was a very formal pun session where he was sitting behind this desk just like get out get out get out and Aaron and I looking at each other like time is a valuable commodity and <laughs> we can't clock out until we get this I like we weren't helping ourselves I don't like we weren't taking it it seemed like we weren't taking it seriously but in our in our own way I guess we were so the clock that was listed for $150 it wasn't there he said he had sold out of it uh, so we started calling bait and switch and they didn't like that either so at this point it's pretty much like guys just get out of here like we don't we don't know what your game is They're but like, time's running out yeah. on this visit boys <laughs> <laughs> no don't pun us back <laughs> you can't flip a pun <laughs> so uh we see this clock uh and we notice that it's, it's one of the ones that's like out of the box and we said you know what what if we what if we gave you uh, what was it uh, ultimately like 250 or something i like, can't quite remember it was like 250 or 300 dollars so uh, <laughs> we were like, we'll do it cash. Yeah. He's like, okay. He's like, if you can bring cash, and at this point, I think it was like 10 minutes left before they close. He said, if you can bring me $300 in cash before we close this Casablanca furniture, we'll let you walk away with this clock. No problem. Let's all go to the ATMs. We'll split it evenly, get the cash, and we'll be back. So we go outside, and at this point, I realize that I've lost my wallet. Oh. So we had parked really far away in Silver Lake, and... uh so I start running up and down the streets of Silver Lake looking for this wallet that possibly fell out of my pocket. And it's, it's you know, all puns aside at this point, it's a ticking clock. We're like down to nine minutes, eight minutes. Rachel goes and gets her share of the of the money. Aaron goes and gets his share of the money from ATMs up and down the street. And I'm like running around like a crazy person trying to find where this wallet could have possibly landed. Eventually, we start digging through Aaron's car and we find it. It's underneath his seat run back to the ATM, get $100 out, run back to Casablanca Furniture. And at this point, it's like two minutes until close. And this guy is like standing outside looking at his watch. And I think he's kind of like warmed up to us a little bit at this point because he can see that we have the money and we're actually trying to do this. I like that the guy at the grandfather clock store needs a watch but yeah, yeah. right <laughs> he can't, can't look at any of his wares well they're all broken probably <laughs> <laughs> so he uh we, we get back and this is where this is where it just gets out of hand so similar to how it's like hey aaron i'm sleeping on the bed feel free to find your own uh place to sleep tonight it was like okay cool i've got the cash here's the clock and it's like oh wait like how are we gonna get this home he's like that's your problem oh no and they just shut the doors on us and lock it so we're standing outside with it and it's not in a box or anything there's i mean there's like no styrofoam nothing to protect it and half of this thing is glass it's like two glass panels a glass door and a mini glass door up on top over the clock there's face a lot of glass. and then there's chains dangling inside of it and a, and a big pendulum swinging back and forth and little glass shelves that you can put trinkets on so we're, we're with Aaron's old Impala, which is this big, super comfortable <laughs> 2006, like, beast of a sedan. And we open the trunk, and we just tip the clock up, and we, we slide it into the back. And it, like, about probably two, like, not a third of it gets out. So two-thirds of the clock is just hanging <laughs> out of the trunk. And we put the back seat down, and we put a Frisbee on it so that the, the hook on the trunk won't actually crack the glass. And we start to drive back to Burbank, and we go up the five. At this point, Aaron's like, oh, wait. I just realized, like, I'm out of gas. Oh. And we, like, look up at the, we're, you know, we're hitting empty. The needle is on E. And then he goes, oh, also, I think I'm about to get a flat tire. And we realize <laughs> one of the tires on his car is, like, moments away probably from popping it is like it, it's so like loose and like this flaccid rubber and we're on the five and i'm in the back seat hanging onto this clock like with my nails like where you see that little ridge on top yeah <laughs> i'm just gripping it like white knuckled and not really doing anything it feels like i'm doing something but realistically these arms aren't keeping it inside the car if and it goes you just go with it oh, i'm going yeah, exactly <laughs> and i'm gonna go down with it too i'm not gonna just let it go and watch it crash i want to die with this thing so we're on the five we're swerving around <laughs> like you know trying to get home faster so and it's like busy so we're trying to cut through traffic with this one time Tire low on air, the the car bing bing bing. 
ding, like the gas alarm going off. And this clock, when we change lanes, it's like the clock goes like vroom, and like swings out one side, then vroom, swings out the other. And long story short, eventually we get it back to the apartment in Burbank and uh, everything worked out. Like the tire was on its last leg, but we pulled up into our, in front of our apartment, right? Sort of at the last moments and you got the tire, you got air put into it eventually, yeah. took the clock out, loaded it up. And the best moment was we realized we hadn't told our third roommate, Matt, anything about this. Like we, we hadn't prepped him or prompt him on anything. So later that night he came home and like he said, as he claims, like when he opened the door, it was like perfectly timed where the, the it was just like directly in front of him. And it was like, <laughs> ding dong, ding. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So loud. Yeah. <laughs> Not that big of an apartment. <laughs> Oh, that was a fun day, though. Dude, so there was sure. one part I uh, you left out, which was one of my favorite parts. Uh, the guy who we gave the cash to was like writing this on his like ledger, and then when he like was handed the cash, he's like, "Oh, okay," and like folds it and just puts it in his pocket. And we're like, "Oh, that's uh, you got to report that." Man. That's like that's that's the deal. Like you're just gonna take this money. Well, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's why people want cash, boys. <laughs> If you oh. can, then they otherwise, who cares right. whether or not you get cash or not? I get it now. They don't have to report it. I'm yeah. learning the way. Of but the I world. think he was just stealing from his oh, boss. From his boss. That's too. what I thought. Do you do you oh. think he claimed that the clock was stolen in the night? Uh, <laughs> thieves <laughs> broke into Casablanca <laughs> furniture and snuck this, this fully working weird. clock out. You know, what I was thinking when you said that uh, if you you know were h- hanging on that thing on the freeway and mm-hmm. if it went, you'd go with it. It just, as I'm looking at it and you're telling that story, I'm like, basically, a grandfather clock is a coffin <laughs> with, a, with a clock in it. It like, is. With it's see-through doors. Coffin. So basically, if you take that clock out, one of you can get buried in that. Oh, you're right. And, Actually, that's not a bad and idea. it just has you know, the see-through part. For the open casket funeral, you yeah. can keep it shut and people it can be can a come closed, with it. <laughs> closed and open. open at the same time. <laughs> you know that earth and like worms and everything it'd be a day before it just cracks and you're just flooded yeah. but uh, who cares you're dead who cares yeah. so uh ben was talking about the time before uh we went to college together there was a period where i was going to community college then i went to the university of iowa and both of these things uh caused me to get horrible horrible grades because once i was set on going to university of northern iowa with him I kind of dropped my business major without telling the school and just stopped going to class. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I then went from like, I had a decent GPA at uh, the community college and then at Iowa, it was like a one, four. And then like second semester was like worse than that. This is bad. So my college career basically started anew when I started going to school at University of Northern Iowa in my mind. I thought it was like a fresh slate fresh school like fresh gpa so <laughs> i was taking i was trying to follow the same like path of through electronic media as ben was so i was trying to get to his classes even though i really had no prerequisites i was like oh this is impossible to get this school is so stupid the way it works <laughs> but they're like you need to take this class first long story like i'm like two or two and a half years behind ben realistically and when it comes down to me trying to graduate uh, it became very difficult because they're like, oh, no, Aaron, uh, those business classes you dropped? Uh, no, you failed those. Um, <laughs> you, <laughs> need, <laughs> retake. you need to retake those classes. And I was like, oh. you've got to be kidding me. So then I had to start going through this whole rigmarole of like finding the classes like, like the, the equivalents, chorus, yeah, the yeah. equivalents that corresponded at you and I, and sometimes they're like, "Well, we don't have that class." <laughs> oh, man. And I was like, "The real Danny Kent situation, yeah, right?" I was like, "You've got to be kidding me! Like, <laughs> this is going to take forever." And my mom had been like harping on me for a long time because it was taking me so long to go to school. <laughs> and then I started doing the math also to like ease her worries because she was like can't you just get C's? But like, <laughs> that's like, I feel like that's a mentality from like uh, her era where it was like, that's what you need. Like we always heard like yeah. President Bush only got C's through Yale and he passed. But if you do the math and if you got a B minus in every single class at the University of Northern Iowa in our major, 
you would never be able to graduate. Yeah, they had a rule where you had to be B or higher in all of their core but stuff. But your mom's trying to talk you down. I love. <laughs> I wish she would have sent a down. note. Like, what? <laughs> Can't you just let him get C's? That's C's good enough. Well, for she was my like, kid. "Aren't you? Aren't you smart enough for C's?" I was like, "No, I am, mom. I'm getting like B minuses and like oh, okay. C's." I was like, "You don't understand. It's a little more difficult than that now." And she's like, "Oh, I." And she actually felt a little bad for me because, like, I I had been trying. It was just. Now it was like coupled with the fact that like these classes from uh, Kirkwood, which is the community college and the University of Iowa, were like coming back to haunt me in the worst way. And so then I had to go to another community college to like make up <laughs> certain classes that Wait. like only corresponded with Kirkwood. So real quick, just to just to lay it all out, you started, you did a year at Kirkwood Community College, yeah, and then you went to the University of Iowa where you were a business major and dropped those business classes, right? And then you had so much fun making videos with your old friend Ben that yep. you came to the, you and I. To, oh yeah, to, to, that, to that frigid campus yeah, <laughs> where <laughs> lungs collapse, and then to supplement the Kirkwood classes that they didn't have the and, equivalent for, and Iowa, and the classes, Iowa classes, so you had to go to another community college. Oh yeah, which community college was? that that was blackhawk community college you went to, i didn't know you did stuff at blackhawk oh i did blackhawk i, Black I want to say i might have done dmac at some point oh my god i don't quite remember you've seen it all i have i've actually it's that's the majority of the colleges in iowa i've is gone it, to is blackhawk like supposed to be for native americans only <laughs> <laughs> like on a reservation you're like somehow i went to school on a reservation as well and is then it? those credits didn't transfer <laughs> to america endowments were super low for it but it's supplemented with casino earnings so it's all good <laughs> you so, work part-time at the black tech table <laughs> to get your way through, through college i feel like iowa is behind in that sense that like there's still like my junior high was indian hills and then like we were the warriors uh, yeah. and everything about like it's like oh the indians nah, we it's fine it's fine yeah we were, like, a ba- we were a bad state about that i know like i just feel like we were the last one to be like oh that is kind of insensitive well mm-hmm. i mean the redskins are still the Redskins. that's true oh, so right no. yeah well i guess until they change they're really the barometer for yeah. for middle schools <laughs> that's what it was Midwest. it was so interesting though in eighth grade from between seventh and eighth grade they mm-hmm. uh changed the name and we're like oh what's it gonna be and they're like we went to the Wildcats. And I was like, oh, you changed Warriors to Wildcats, but not Indian Hills. Yeah. I was like, that <laughs> was strange. It was an interesting choice for them because everyone kind of thought that they were going to change Indian Hills, like the full gambit of the name. <laughs> no, just just Warriors to Wildcats. Also, like, is there any more default of a mascot than the Wildcat? Oh, no. I mean, yeah, it is just... Many. There was a time in the NCAA tournament in like 1998 when it was like Kansas State, Arizona another wildcat team so it was in kentucky <laughs> and so it was oh. three wildcats oh were in the God. final four and it was like this big commotion about this like the wildcats are gonna win as someone who doesn't follow sports closely and needs the mascots to determine what's going on in the games <laughs> i don't think i would have handled that series of, of games very well oh no. not helpful <laughs> it was not <laughs> not a fun journey so you went to all these the, all these colleges that's really the breakdown of what you where you went and what you needed to get out of you and i with a degree yeah so at this point, I had never really spoken to my counselor or the supervisor, whoever was like head of the department. Well, clearly, or you completely yeah. <laughs> ignored everything <laughs> exactly. that they told you. Well, it was like senior, like what I was, what I will consider my senior year, which was like my sixth year of college. And she was like, well, "What's interesting? Uh, we're finally meeting." And I was like, <laughs> "You know what? You did, you did to her what I did with Fred Richter about the eggshell. You just didn't talk to anyone. Well, you I just thought, assumed it would take care of I itself. I thought I knew what I was doing. I did, which is like right. very stupid. Like, I was like a college kid. Really, they shouldn't like the fact that I went into school and mm-hmm. I never met with her in the first place. And they're like, "Oh, you got two years under your belt. You're fine." It's like no, those are different places. <laughs> I imagine you showing up to each new school with a t-shirt that says, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> Just an air of confidence yes. that's completely misplaced. So I started high-fiving everyone. I started meeting with, um, her name was Marilyn Shaw. I started meeting with her like on a weekly basis for like updates. And it was, I was like, oh, she's like, how are your grades doing? I was like, my current grades are good. But I need to know about these past grades. So then, it, like this, like Hobbit esque story of like going from like university to university, <laughs> try, <laughs> trying to get transcripts because now they need to like like they they need to correspond. But they're like, oh, Iowa might have a class that's like that. And I remember thinking uh, that it was like this one that I'd gotten a C in called Mass Com. But I was like, oh, that's just like. Uh, some ridiculously named the class at University of Iowa, but like we read from the same book. 
and she's like oh really well uh you can go there and if you get their syllabus from like four years ago you what? can possibly transfer it over like with that grade because i got an a in that class or no i got an a in the mass com but i need that to uh like a exchange for the iowa course that it's like I, a that hostage I deal it was because wow. because at one point she told me you can't you can't like just keep taking classes and get even if you get a's it'll take you like three more years <laughs> of like solid <laughs> a's before you can like repair your damaged right. gpa oh she's like the only you have to yeah. redo them so it's like you have to turn these f's into a's like these these like no pass because oh. i wasn't even there into a's or b's and i was like oh this is so difficult and i was like why didn't anyone tell me when i was younger it's like oh because you were 18 when you were making these horrible decisions <laughs> i also like you just tracking down all these transcripts and going to like this old man in a cabin who's just like no they don't keep those here anymore <laughs> you've got to head up to the mountain to like get that transcript you oh. want to take intro to business iowa style oh <laughs> a scroll you must seek <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Beneath the falcon's beak. It's a riddle. <laughs> so that was part of it was I emailed the university. I was like, I took a class there with some professor. <laughs> I don't remember any of this, yeah. but I knew the name of it because it was still like I still have my Iowa transcript. And I was like, can you just email me the syllabus? And what was crazy was there was another class I needed to do this with. I had somehow kept that folder it was just at my mom's house like mm -hmm. it was just like on a shelf somewhere i was like oh there it is so handy didn't have that syllabus so i needed to like find it and i emailed they're like well we can't email it to you we don't have them on we don't have digital copies she goes but we do have an archive where we keep every single syllabus that the university puts out every year and i thought that was crazy and she's like you gotta go to like uh some off-campus building that was like, it like a vault like, it was and wow. like i had to though i had to prove so hardly that i had gone to the university of iowa because i no longer went there like mm. where's your student card i was like well i don't go here anymore they're like well how do we know you are who you are and I was how like, do we well, know you don't want to just look through uh, syllabi exactly strangers because it just sounds fun to me <laughs> like, <laughs> way to spend an afternoon <laughs> We've got it, and they're just like having this big meeting. There's so many kids coming here to get their jollies looking through these. We've got to put a stop to it. It's like the new, um, like, huffing. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> like looking through syllabi. <laughs> so, so I somehow, like, coax them into giving me this uh, syllabus, and I... Uh, Went back to it was like I had to take time off class too because they're oh of so course, your grades are dipping yeah they're of course only <laughs> open during the day so I had to take like a day trip down to the University of Iowa and I <laughs> and they're like why aren't you in class right now it was like their other question I was like I'm supposed to be but this is more important and that sounds <laughs> yeah. crazy to anyone in education it's like no class is the most important thing so <laughs> I get the syllabus and like I'm kind of looking at it and I'm like clearly had misremembered some things I was like oh that's not even the same book it's like it's <laughs> similar but like <laughs> you get ideas. yourself in a whole new like it, like replacement class that doesn't even fix the replacement right. class so like, oh. well, so like MassCom at you and I I, like it replaced it similarly enough to me i was like well it's still worth a shot so i take the syllabus to marilyn shaw and this is like early august or like september mm -hmm. and i was trying to graduate by uh that december because i i like if i did that then all i would need was my internship which is actually out here in uh los angeles which was um the same internship ben had and so I was like, that's all I'll need to graduate. I won't need to worry about like the second semester, which was like, I was like, I'll just work, save money for California. And that'll be perfect. So I go to Marilyn and give her the syllabus. And I was like, so is this, is this fine? And she's, I was, it looks fine to me, but, uh, we're going to need the head of the department to like, okay, this. <laughs> and I was like, oh, perfect. And I was like, who's that? I'm sure I never met him, but it was Weird like... Weird Al Yankin. It was like, it was like <laughs> Dr. Osbande. And I was like, oh. oh, okay. And she's like, he's the guy that... And I was like, oh, I know who that is. I go, I haven't seen him around here lately. She goes, oh, I know. Tragic. Oh. Her, uh, her, his father just passed away. And I was like, oh, okay. Because she had told me it might take a while. And I was like, oh, I, I understand. It's fine. Um, I totally understand. Whenever he gets a chance. She goes, no, you don't understand. Uh <laughs> oh. His father was 
a tribal king in <laughs> Africa. What? And he had recently passed away. As the king, uh, his son, the <laughs> prince, had to come back to Africa to like take over his kingly duties what? and preside over the two week funeral. And I was like, but when do you need this by? And she's like, end of month. And I was like, but he is. He's a king in Africa right now. It's like, you just, what you just told me. I was like, can we fax it to him? (laughs) Can we email it to him? I don't know if you heard me. He's an African (laughs) king. (laughs) And she was like, oh no, they don't have that there. (laughs) I was like, not even the king gets a fax? I was like, like, you how shitty is this tribe? (laughs) Got to be. Get a fax for the king. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, you've got to be kidding me. She's like, yeah, he's like, like on the plains of Africa. Like I was like, okay, uh, when's he gonna be back? She goes, well, that's kind of hard. He needs to decide if he wants to stay there to preside <laughs> or come back here. She goes, I think he's gonna come back here, but realistically, I mean, would you turn that up or pass what? that up? <laughs> Once he gets a taste of the royal life, he might not be able to. <laughs> so like, come back to the common land. So months oh pass. Oh. And or like weeks pass realistically, and I keep emailing her. I was like, "Is he back yet?" And she's like, "No, no, no." Oh, so you didn't go. And so I was like, "Did you eat like every every like?" She did have one thing where it's like I can email him, and every two weeks, uh, he has access to like he'll check his email. I was like, "Oh, good." She was like, "He just checked it. I can email it to him." And then there's like a giraffe that (laughs) comes by with a. With a laptop on it. <laughs> <laughs> like every time they can catch that giraffe. Then we should just keep the laptop email. in a hut. No, no, oh, no. no. It's got to be mobile. It's on the sacred <laughs> giraffe. So there was a point where I came back and I knew he had like just gone through like this email checking period. And I was like, oh, so did he get back? And she goes, he answered some of my emails, but not all of them. So he must have got, got to it. And I was like, you have got. I was like, shouldn't this be like top of list student needs to graduate? Like alert, alert, like high priority, something, something to let him know that I need this to happen as soon as possible. And then like I, at the back of my mind, I also felt bad. I was like, his father did just pass away and I was being so and greedy. trying to learn how to run a Exactly. Yeah. Got a lot in his plate, man. <laughs> You're not exactly top priority as you said so like weeks did turn into months and i was i kind of stopped contacting her as much because i just felt i was bothering her and i felt so bad but november comes around and i finally was like okay has he responded and she was like oh yeah we got that uh (laughs) I got a response like a few weeks ago. And I was like, <laughs> why didn't you talk to me about that? And there's another point about this that I should mention that during this entire process, every time I entered her office, she had no idea who I was. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, she Aaron was like, Crennan? And you are... And I was like, yeah, I'm Aaron. I have the story. The guy is in Africa. And she's like, Oh, right, 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 It was always this, like, rehashing of what had just happened a week before. She has that uh, Brad Pitt face disease. Did you <laughs> oh, yeah, I have yeah. heard about that. Yeah, which I think is bullshit, but and Brad Pitt claims to, I can't remember faces. Oh, that's you know? just, is that a classifiable so, disease? There's a long name for it that uh, I think he heard of it and goes, oh, cool, now I can say that, so yeah. I'm not an asshole now. But there's supposedly this really long name for why people who can't remember faces. Oh my god! Yeah, I yeah, I don't know if I believe that either. I, mm. It sounds. Yeah. I mean, I have a trouble with it, but I would never think to go as far as to yeah, claim like I have a disease. Yeah, yeah. That's, I don't know. So that kind of took place, and I was like, "Is it too late for me to like get my diploma?" at the end of this semester and she's like oh absolutely <laughs> those are supposed to be in october i was like oh are you kidding I was like, there's no leeway i was like i have all the information i have the grades i'm not taking classes next semester what would she even have you do like you didn't get it on time so just next time yeah like, she was like next time and i was like what oh, okay well can, what about uh if a king in africa <laughs> asks you to to do it <laughs> Can we send one more email <laughs> to, like, get an exception? Right. Like, a king can make this happen? A toucan flies across the Atlantic <laughs> carrying a message. So, let him pass. 
So I didn't have class that next semester, and for some reason they wouldn't let me graduate at the end of that semester because they're like, you didn't take any classes. And I was like, well, that's a dumb rule. Then I had to wait for my intern. Wait. Oh, yeah, Ben. I don't think I heard that. Yeah, it was just like they wouldn't let me. They're like, you just, didn't wait. They're, they're like just, just wait till your internship is done. And I was like, okay. So then I go through this entire internship, and our uh, intern like leader, the guy... He he was very busy. Uh, also an African king. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Different one. <laughs> so it, to no fault of my <laughs> own, to no fault of my own, he like uh, couldn't get my paperwork from the internship in time to graduate after the summer. So I had to then wait until no uh, the December of the following year, like a year later before I could get my diploma. During this whole time, I always wanted like an okay from her that was like, so I can get my degree. And she's like, it looks like you can. Ugh. And I was like, eh, just say yes. Just say yes. You know, she hasn't said yes once in this entire story. It's, yeah. it's like, <laughs> it's horrible. It's, well, it's a possibility is used quite a bit. Yeah. Long story. How it ended was I asked them to send my diploma to California because I lived here and they're like, well, we can't send it to California. Jesus we'll Christ. Send it, we'll send it to your, your mom's house and i was like well then my mom's just gonna have to send it to me and she's like yep and i was like <laughs> why are you why are you making graduating so hard like i'm not even trying is it because i'm no longer giving you money is that like the deal i couldn't understand it but it's not additional postage is it <laughs> like it's not like when it used to be it's, long distance right calling it, is more it, it's, it's like, all it should just it's just by weight yeah, if it's, it's in the domestic weight. states maybe she didn't know that yeah. she's like we're not gonna send it to africa <laughs> <laughs> California. Also, that's an extra. That would be what? Even if we were on the old scale, it'd be. I would assume thirty cents, seventy right. cents. Maybe she's like, I, I blew my whole postal budget on <laughs> stuff going to Africa recently to like get signatures and stuff. It's all your <laughs> fault too. You're the reason we had to send it there in the first place. Oh, that's crazy. You had a very different college experience than I did. Oh yeah. yeah? Uh, I was a little bit the opposite of you because I grew up in such a horrible place, mm -hmm. uh, Riverside, San Bernardino, <laughs> Inland Empire, that I wanted out of there quick. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can only afford to go to Cal State San Bernardino and I got in there and I was like, okay, how do I make this happen and get out of here? I want a, I want a diploma and I want to move to LA. So uh, I looked at the four-year bachelors and I found a few loopholes and I exploited them. <laughs> oh my um, God. Like number one, you basically have to uh, you have to get a certain number of credits and you graduate. So I counted them up and uh, the way they did it was they said six credits and under is X amount of dollars mm -hmm. and then six, seven credits and, and up is this amount of dollars. And so I think they thought, well, there's a limit on how many credits or classes you can take, so mm -hmm. we're not going to break it down more than that. So I just said to myself, well, how many credits do I have to take per quarter to get out of here in three years? And I did that, and that knocked off a year of tuition. Right. Mm. Right? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, wow. and they just thought, well, no one Wait, would Wait, so you're telling me you that. didn't take seven years to graduate? That's... I took three years <laughs> to get my four-year bachelor. Go less, and pay saved, less. Saved a, a year of tuition. Oh, my God. But I also did things like this. <laughs> uh, my the math <laughs> class you have to take. They go, okay. Well, basically, only one math class counts. It's like math five hundred one or something. <laughs> and they say, uh, what you got to once you pass that, you're done with math. Mm -hmm. But you have to take this placement exam that places you somewhere down on the scale, and then you might have to take seven classes to get up to that or uh, whatever, uh -huh. you know? So after the placement, then you, you know, but all those other math classes are basically just... To get you ready for the final To get you to one. the one that counts. So you could everybody. take a really great placement test and only take the final class, and that's it. Theoretically, yeah, but you'd okay. have to be really yeah. good at mm -hmm. math. So most people, you know, you'd end up taking a ton of math classes. So I thought, well, what if I just don't take that placement test? I just sign up for this, <laughs> the one that counts. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'll just see if they catch me. And then, and then my whole thing was like, I'll work my ass off to just get a C and pass that class. And that'll knock off like eight classes, yeah. you know? 
And I did it. I just took it. They didn't figure it out. They didn't go, no, you have to start somewhere else. I enrolled in it. I, I got it like a C minus or C or something. Math done. Oh, Don't my pass. God. And uh, you so fast I, passed it. I fast passed it, and I, and I have no idea. <laughs> you took it. You took a Disneyland fast pass in college. I don't know if they ever had anyone else try that, and if I've had to like stop that oh or something. But God, I did like that. now that math teacher that teach that taught that class is a was a fascinating story. He was this very harried. Um, like uh downtrodden uh like foreign man who barely spoke english well he's like maybe from like russia or the ukraine Mm -hmm. young guy um rode his bike into class and could barely speak english but was a math whiz you know and he was (laughs) and he was uh he was always late and it was to the point where everyone was mad at him because Mm -hmm. it was like come on you know we gotta learn this stuff so we can get out of here and people started being like audibly like snarky to him when he came in like hey you know we've been here 20 minutes you're the teacher show up on time you're all very sorry <laughs> so then one day we're standing out there he's like i don't know like class is almost over and everyone's just pissed and he comes up and everyone's just telling him off like being as rude as you can believe especially like this is your professor and then he gets everybody in there. Once he gets us in, he goes, I'm very sorry. You know, today I was riding my bicycle to here and I was hit by a car. Oh, my God. And I go to the emergency room and, <laughs> you know, the nurse notice on my paperwork. I feel out that this today is my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and, it was just like, and all of these people, we had all been so shitty to him, like oh, and just telling him off. And it was like. And, and oh, it was a hit and run. Like that car hit him on the oh, bike and no. then took off. Oh, God. And then he had to like drag his broken bike to the hospital. <laughs> oh, my you know, God. On his limbs that still worked. And then we're like, oh, so it's cool that you're late. We're sorry. You know. And, and then. <laughs> Why didn't he call? Well, this. Hey, I went to school in uh, in the time before cell phones. Uh, okay. So he could have called from the hospital. But yeah. This was like early 90s. So. Okay. Um, I still so think he could he could have called the office. Let you guys well, know. Well, but that college is weird. Like this was out in some portable oh. like Cal State San Bernardino. Yeah. You're imagining a situation <laughs> that is not Cal State San Bernardino. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a set of resources that I was see. not San Bernardino. All in the of a 90s. sudden, I understand. By the way, mm-hmm. I went to uh, my first apartment. I tried to get there mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> right off campus. I went to this place and it looked like amazing. Mm-hmm. It's this brand new apartment complex and it was really cheap. And yeah. I, I got an apartment. I was like in heaven. This place was so amazing. And I was one of the first people to rent an apartment in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, the uh, there was my next door neighbor. I go, man, isn't this awesome? And and they were like, yeah, it's great. And then um, about a week later, I'm walking out of my apartment at one point and it was like this zoo where there was a baby on my doorstep. I was stepping over a child, to, like, a toddler that couldn't like talk or anything that was just there alone. And then there's a stairway, the kind of outdoor stairs that like if if you you could fall through the slats oh, yeah. and yeah. off the stairs. Mm-hmm. And there's a baby crawling up that. <laughs> and there's just like, it, it was like, you know, out of a training day or something, like <laughs> that kind of situation. And then the neighbor goes to me, oh yeah, um, well, what happened is this used to be like a horrible project kind of place, mm-hmm. and they kicked everybody out, and they remodeled it, and then they were going to try to re-rent them, and no one wanted them, so then they just let all the same people back in, <laughs> and then another week went by, and there was a shooting in the courtyard, and someone was murdered right outside oh my, my door, <laughs> and then I just left that place, and I moved in with a woman who, who had a whole house by her cell phone. She was like a, a manager at Albertsons <laughs> and I never we never saw each other like oh, I, it was crazy. like I had a house to myself wow. we just had different schedules oh sure well she did like probably nights and stuff yeah, yeah. and oh. I was always at school so it was like That's perfect it's kind of awesome nice but uh but yeah Sam Bernardino man you gamed that system I really did but I also it did I did the work yeah, they yeah. wanted me to do. Yeah, you got. I mean, you got the grades you, you know? needed, so clearly you were yeah. doing the studying. And I passed that one math class legally. Mm-hmm. Right. They don't want you to take a shot at it like that. <laughs> 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 like that's not their goal is to like because everyone would be like, hey, let me take a shot and see if I can skip all the other courses, you know? Because there was a lot of it I just didn't know. But it's like if you could just latch on, oh, I know that, and I know that. They have a deal where they can blindfold you and you throw a dart at a dartboard <laughs> and you can get your diploma in a day. But if you miss. 
because you pay double tuition. <laughs> oh, <man>. it's, <laughs> this sounds like a Vegas school. Of, uh, this is Blackhawk Casino college. college. <laughs> Black Hawk. Oh, was that how it worked yeah. at Blackhawk? Yeah. Yeah. No, that was the whole but thing because that was actually a math class. And the, actually what's interesting about that math class, like there was always this thing about community colleges where it was like it was just so much easier. And if it was in the summer, it was incredibly easy. So I had to retake the U and I class that I uh, – it was like this hard math class and someone's like just take it at blackhawk it's so easy and like you'd come in there and he would just glaze over everything and like mm. he was like giving you answers to the test he's like hey guys this one's gonna be on the test remember 53 so uh, that's the answer <laughs> get out of my life <laughs> amazing oh my god well jeremy thank you so much for coming so so this much was fun so much fun oh, guys yeah we had such a great time with you uh do you have a, a twitter or anything you want to talk about that's coming up uh i i love saying dumb things on twitter so if anyone wants to follow me it's jeremy underscore rowley j-e-r-e-m-y underscore r-o-w-l-e-y someone took my name so i had to put in an underscore oh, the underscore route yeah. yeah jeremy underscore rally is without a doubt my favorite twitter account oh yeah oh. we we seriously like uh, we don't need to we don't need to retweet anything but it's always oh. so much it's, it's really a gold mine um you can also follow this podcast twitter at krenbens c-h-r-e-n-b-e-n-s you can also follow aaron's account which is also very funny at krenen c-h-r-e-n-e-n or you can follow my account which is probably the least funny of the four available but it's 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 all right i'd say it's a c c minus oh, uh, in a math class i follow you both and i love your well tweets. thank you so much <laughs> come on my handle's white bathrobe which is spelled like uh i stole a white bathrobe from a from I a keep- spa this weekend yeah <laughs> you sure yeah. it's not code for racism oh <laughs> that's probably what if i found out like i changed it over the weekend and I, my followers like tripled everyone's like finally oh, no <laughs> but they're all skinheads <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting the retweets though. The retweets I need. Oh, God, <laughs> I God. love when people. I we know people like that who are like, oh yeah, I'm tweeting horrible, mean content, but the retweets they're pretty Ew. sweet. Ew. We saw someone recently that was so mad that a tweet they got that they like didn't put a lot of effort in got so much, so many retweets, mm-hmm. and they're like, why couldn't it be one of my good ones? And I was like, take <laughs> the hint, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> it's like just be happy that it's happening ding, because ding, ding, ding. it's yeah. like how like a Facebook like system. It's like guys, I just want a couple of likes on this. Yeah, it'd be so sweet. <laughs> oh my god, it's like just a few retweets. Every, oh. You know what? Everybody just wants their birthday party every day. That's what's happening right yeah, now. Yeah, well, I hear on your birthday you could get hit by a bike and then <laughs> or hit on a bike. And, <laughs> 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 and, <laughs> <laughs> and run. Like, did you yeah. did you guys slowly and weekly break into a chorus? of happy birthday to you (laughs) he wouldn't have understood it i took i took one summer class at you and i and it was a very like a extremely foreign man who didn't have a complete grasp on the language i'm actually curious if uh your math teacher said anything similar to this but (laughs) he'd always say instead of a like he'd just always say it is not a rocket science he's like (laughs) it is not a rocket science and it's like and so many little like so close you almost had it but i couldn't tell if he was like that was the joke that he liked was that he was saying <laughs> yeah. these things wrong or in his country they only had one rocket one rocket so the rocket is, side it is a rocket science <laughs> of the uh or the rocket they own <laughs> this is i took i really quick i took a math class at dmac which is des moines area community college i was so bad at math i just took it in the summertime so that i could just the not... summer courses were in a really sweet basement and, yeah uh... exactly yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't wasn't dank. Didn't smell bad. Uh, but it was just it, just so I could focus on that and not get a D. And uh, I remember it was a stat class, like statistics, and it was just this classroom full of like just the whitest Iowan teenagers you can imagine. Like we were all just so bright, pasty white. And the guy who was teaching the classes up front, he was like, um, you know, like statistics is really just the art of of finding the odds. Like, for example, I would say, you know, it's it's reasonable to say that this class is all white, full of white students. And then he looks at me and he goes, well, mostly white. 
<laughs> I just looked around. I was like, "What do you think I am? Like, I'm so, like, so pale. Like, I'm so confusing." And he like winked at me and then just kept working. He's like, "I'll never know what he thought I was, but it's fine. It's just I, what an odd." But when you're in a room and that person is telling you you represent the diversity in the room, <laughs> like, you're that's a man has such a low bar. He's probably for diversity. Probably the black hair. So that was what. It's like you're he, not blonde. <laughs> <laughs> you're practically Sir, an African that's, prince. That's <laughs> you become the guy that everyone looks at when they're about to say something semi-racist. They're like, Wait, is he is, is the ethnic kid guy? Oh, then they oh find out god. that I have a skinhead Twitter <laughs> handle and they're like, oh, it's fine. Oh, it's it's cool. fine. Yeah. Oh my god, I love the, the Iowa classroom that's so white they think the one kid that doesn't have blonde hair like is probably Nigerian or something. <laughs> he, like, he just can't risk offending me. Also, now that I think about it, what an odd thing to use it as, as an example. Like, you're, it's reasonable to say that all of you are white. Well, that's not really statistics, and it's also a really strange it thing strange. to call out. Well, thank you so much for yes, coming. Thank you so, so much, much fun, Jeremy. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.